Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Another edition of Test Fit Tuesday. Thanks for all joining. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a delay between me talking and anything that you write into the chat. So if you're putting it up there, I will get to you as soon as I can. Um, just to kick this off, though, while we're waiting for everyone to join, um, we're going to talk about retail today. Just a, a quick introduction of all the different types. Um, And we're going to go ahead and if you are looking at this right now and you're joining for retail, please put into the chat what you're um, what you're working on, what you're interested in. Maybe you're just working on mixed use retail. So you're trying to add some retail underneath some multifamily or office. Um, maybe you're doing some out parcel pads. Maybe you're doing full ground up for like a lifestyle center or shopping center. Uh, love to hear what you guys are working on and uh and, and where so if you have both of those please toss it into the chat um and we're going to go ahead and uh talk through some of that today also i know some of you may be joining in areas that are impacted by the storm so i thank you um if not if you're watching this later thank you for doing that as well hope everyone stays safe today uh, we've got a few of our, our co-workers in there as well um so just want to make sure everyone stays safe stays dry and uh and you know, has an enjoyable day <laughs> with, uh, with the storm. I think it's called a nor'easter or something like that. Um, seems pretty dangerous, so hope everyone stays safe. Um, but I'm excited. Retail is one of my favorite things to talk about. So, um, you know, we've done a, a few manufactured housing bits. Um, so now we're going to dive into some retail parts as well. Um, just giving a couple minutes for everyone to get in and get settled. Um, but yeah. Excited to chat with you all today. Let's see, it looks like we have a few people joining. Awesome. Nice, seeing some civil engineers in here, love it. Welcome. Please hop in with what you guys are seeing too. Love to always see what our civils are doing. Awesome, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, um, but also please put in what you're working on, what you're seeing, um, happy to field anything in that regard as well. So um, let me go ahead and jump in. So for those of you that are brand new, welcome. Uh, very excited to, to meet you. Uh, hope we can have a chat after this as well. Uh, my name is Jack. Uh, this is Test Fit Tuesday, where we actually run through alternative use cases for a software called Test Fit. Um, we're going to do this basically every other week right now um, for a while, and then we'll maybe switch this to every three weeks or four weeks, um, just to, depending on schedules. But ideally, we're just talking through alternative types of uses. So if you've heard of TestFit before, if you're familiar with us, great. If not, um, the likelihood is that you will be today. Um, but if you have heard of us, it's because of our multifamily or industrial solving capabilities, right? Or even just our parking, because we love parking. And we're going to talk about a lot of parking today. Um, but here we're going to talk about alternative types. So for those that don't understand TestFit, the really quick part of it, um, and we can always go into more detail as well, but just to give you a broad strokes overview, TestFit is taking a lot of intelligence in, running it through an AI, and giving you full control over the output so that you can solve for different feasibility studies. Um, so we've built ourselves on multifamily, industrial, and truthfully parking. Um, I'm here to kind of explore all of the other types of capabilities within TestFit with you all and show you what we can do and um, how we can be effective in that. So, you know, some things that TestFit does brings in for you is site conditions. Uh, so that, whether that be topography, FEMA flood maps, parcel layouts, all those types of things all come in. Um, and then within uh, our development IQ, so we're able to talk through structure with our parameters and you're able to adjust those as you need. Deal economics, you can put in some parameters for that. And then construction feasibility too, we're actually bringing some of that intelligence in along with your ability to control the algorithm so that you can get an output that you like, right? Everything updates in real time. So what you're seeing here is uh, uh, you know, a GIF of us actually using the software in real time and everything that you're going to see today is live as well, just to show you that we are really fast and it's important to be fast in order to have that iterative collaborative process. No one's working on retail. I don't see anyone in the, the retail piece. What are we working on, everybody? Let's see. 
Um, so test fits relatively unknown capabilities, right? Our alternative use cases is what we're going to be working on within uh, these test fit uh, Tuesday sessions. So we've already done a couple of sessions on manufactured housing. If you're looking for more on that, come back in February. We're going to do some deeper dives there. Um, and then retail, we're going to focus on this week and in two weeks. And then again in March, um, data centers is on the list, ho hotel storage, and even some city planning pieces as well. Um, so we're very excited to kind of get all of those up and running for you. If there's anything on here that you do not see, you know, you want to do something different than data centers, you want to do something different than any of these, um, and you want test fit or you want some sort of automation to help you solve for it, please reach out. Love to help you. Um, just talk to some folks this morning about some al either alternative use cases from what you see here. Um, so happy to uh, field that and see what we can do for you. Um, it's kind of my passion to figure out alternative ways to, to make test fit algorithm work. Um, sweet. So let's get into retail. So uh, just a little bit of background on myself. I have worked in retail for a while. Um, well, so it'll be, I started off selling toys as a toy store as my first job, but um, I worked for GGP and Brookfield, um, both of which are now used to be two of the largest owners of um, retail real estate in the country, along with, you know, the likes of Simon, Westfield, um, those types of groups. And so, you know, within that process, it was a crash course, right, on all the different types of retail. And what really stands out to me about retail is, one, it's unbelievably malleable. So if you work in retail, you're having the most fun. I just, I just fully believe that. Um, oh, Sam, you want to look at life sciences? Yeah, man, we absolutely can do that. Thanks for putting that in there. Um, a little bit of industrial multifamily, of course, parking. Can't do anything about parking. Um, sorry. So when you're looking at retail, right, it's super malleable. So you can always go into a box and refill it with something else. Um, it's you know, the hot topic for discussion when we're looking at office and multifamily today, once you do one or the other, it's really hard to get to the, the next type of building, right? But retail, you can play with that box every which way to Sunday. So the other part of it is everything stacks, right? So this list here of um, the type of types of developments that we can do within retail, all of them are going to stack on top of each other, right? So we're going to start off with an out parcel and pad, um, kind of talk through that. But then you go up to a neighborhood center, a lifestyle center, power, and then all the way to shopping. And you're actually seeing each of those components coming into play in the next rung up, right? Um, so makes it really fun, allows you to do a lot of different things. And also for those that are on the value side of re retail real estate, you know that um, depending on where one of these pieces in the stack is, it's actually going to be worth more or less because of the synergies that come with it. So um, let me go ahead and let's start talking about out parcels. So out parcel pad, for those that aren't familiar, right? Just a um, location typically out of a, a normal parcel, but typically on the periphery along a major thoroughfare. Um, it's usually single occupant. Uh, you probably have a drive through going through it. And then you have different types of parking uh, that kind of change based on the use, right? So you're going to be looking at... Um, you know, some drop-off stalls, some online pickup stalls. You're going to look at drive-through extra wait time stalls, ADA, compact. You're going to use your trash in some of these parking stalls as well because different um, buildings or different users are going to want trash in different locations. So it's all, again, very malleable. Um, and that's the beauty of TestFit is we can go in and put some of those constraints in, move the block around, um, get to the layout that we want pretty quickly. When an out parcel pad really becomes something as more of an addition is when we get into like a neighborhood center. So this is pretty common within suburban markets. You wouldn't necessarily see this in a very dense market. And that's because it's kind of what you would see in a dense market that would be tucked underneath your multifamily or, you know, other high rise. Um, and that's because the neighborhood center has about a medium, um, small to medium sized anchor tenant box, right? So that's what you kind of see up here in your top right. Um, so think of that as like a small footprint grocer. You're going to have maybe um, like a home goods store or something like that, like an Ace Hardware, right? Uh, something on the smaller side. And then along this run here, you're actually going to have a run of kind of what we would think of as a strip center, but like a multi-tenant building. So your other um, uses that you would have kind of a, like a 
a dentist's office, a dry cleaners, right? Some of those services that you would otherwise get in a, an urban environment that you need access to in a suburban environment. And then of course you can add an out parcel because there's already this attraction to uh, this red building, you're going to want to bring in auxiliary uses that can capture some more of that traffic, right? I go and get my tools, I drop off my dry cleaning, and I go and grab a coffee, right? Um, how can you make those synergies work? And that's where that plan kind of comes together. Talking through a lifestyle center, this is one of my favorites and it's becoming increasingly popular. So a lifestyle center is more built around the experience of the retail than it is just, I need retail. Right. Um, and this is becoming increasingly popular, especially in like secondary and, and tertiary markets that maybe their main street hasn't materialized completely, or maybe they just want to add to it, but they, you know, the city can't afford to add more or developers sees an opportunity for demand in retail, but looking for, you know, a, a newer footprint and a newer layout. So you can see it's kind of a similar um, footprint to our uh neighborhood center where you have like a small to mid-tier size box with some multi-tenant buildings but then you have more multi-tenant buildings kind of interspersed and then what you can see in that um inset image over here is that what we're actually looking at is kind of a, a downtown feel right so you're looking down a main street with parking with all the retail facing each other there's still a bunch of parking all the way around which is a little bit different than most um uh downtown it areas right it's usually like a destination that you either take transit to or drive and park further away or maybe in a garage this is more centered on um, a feel within a larger parcel so um it feels like the main street you might have parking at 90 degree in the way that i'm showing here you might have it as um a parallel parking or you might have a fun term that i love to bring up which is a wound earth which is something that is mostly sidewalk. So maybe where this tree is, you would actually remove it and you're able to put uh, a road through there that you can block off, but it's a zero curb road. So when the uh, car traffic or truck traffic is going through, it goes very slowly because the pedestrian is allowed to move freely along that path. So just different ways um, that creative developers are able to um, make changes and add a different feel or a sense of place to a location with a lifestyle center. Any questions so far, feel free to hop in if you want to, you know, dive in anywhere. I know we're kind of doing a review, but just wanted to make sure we're on the same page for what type of retail we're going to solve for within TestFit and then kind of get into what that looks like. Cool, cool. All right, so next one is a power center. Um, this is super common. We've all probably been here before. Um, power center is something where you go to like, a major big box. So think if you're like Targets, your Costco's, your Home Depot's, all those types of things, um, they have a big attraction, right? They'll have a trade area that is, you know, tens of miles um, in radius so that they are bringing a lot of people in. Um, and because of that, you see a lot more auxiliary uses coming through. Um, so, you know, we may have had like one or two out parcels for each of our neighborhood and lifestyle center. Most things are, are pretty much in line with those buildings here, target, you know, Costco, all those types of things. They're going to have their own prototypical building. They're going to have their own layout and they want no one else in their footprint. Right. But they have a huge demand for parking. Um, but they also have huge demand. And so with that huge demand, you're going to be able to capture some of that within other types of uses out here. Um, and in plan, you know, this all looks like it might be blocking this building, but in practice, your out parcels are almost always shorter uh, than your main building, which allows them to have the big presence. And there's likely a thoroughfare behind them where their signage is being seen by a lot more folks. So these people are just secondary uses within here. Um, but you know, you start to have, you know, you have some out parcels, you maybe even have like a small mid tier box, kind of like from your neighborhood lifestyle center. You could even do another strip here if you wanted to. I just did a couple of pads, but all of this can be different types of uses, a drive through restaurant, whatever it needs to be. Um, but then parking is always a big deal. So you can kind of see we're turning some parking inward in order to make it more focused on these types of uses and keeping parking centered around the big box. Um, to keep them happy as a tenant as well. Parking's a big deal in retail, so um, there's a lot that we can do with it. Shopping centers. So this is the last one uh, that we're gonna talk about, at least for now. 
um, but it's one of my favorites. So Shopping Center was kind of the original, um, uh, like power center, all of it, that sort of thing. Um, because what it essentially came down to, if you remove this right wing from your mind for a second and just think of this straight run, the idea of a shopping center was an enclosed, um, like power center or, um, neighborhood center in that you have two, uh, large boxes that have large trade areas and large demand. And then you have all of your inline here and the inline could have been your out parcels in um, the other types of models, but this essentially is, I'm going to go to my big box, which, you know, used to be like a Sears or a Dillard's and you go and you do your shopping and then you go in to the inline stores where there's probably food just to get a snack or something like that if you do on your shopping and then also stop at some of these other stores. So a lot of these inline stores picked where they wanted to go based on who was the big box or who were the big boxes that were there because they drove the demand. Now, there's obviously just a massive sea of parking going around here because there's just so much demand, especially on peak days. You have to uh, build for those, unfortunately. Um, but there's a lot of creative ways that malls are getting into repurposing these areas. Um, so we're going to talk through some of that next week, too, on what we can do with TestFit to kind of not necessarily build any new shopping centers, but maybe replicate what we have and then start to um, build out where we can repurpose some of these sites. So a lot of fun things within here. Um, if there's anything that you guys want to see on top of these, please let me know. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this screen for a second. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into TestFit to kind of show you what this model looks like. And we're almost there. Perfect. All righty. So. This is what this looks like in TestFit. So a lot of the images that you just saw was actually using our plugin with Enscape in order to add some more color, do a rendered aerial view or a rendered site plan, which is some of my favorite ways of looking at things. So when we came over here for a second, you can actually start to see all of the inline units are spec'd out. You can see their square footage size. We have the gray areas, which are your back of house, your um, uh, uh, utility areas, that sort of thing. So we're able to actually get pretty um, creative with the layouts and understand what's going on. We're also breaking apart some of this parking just so that we can control each um, different piece. So like over here, we can actually say, all right, this parking actually wants to um, face that building, right? Instead of going the opposite direction so everyone can walk straight towards the mall. Um, makes that super simple. So let's go ahead and take a step back and dive into our you know second tier so we have this entry space that we can always adjust we don't necessarily need it right that sort of thing um but you know most retailers don't typically like uh our most uh medium-sized boxes don't typically like to have parking right in front um so if it's like a grocery that sort of thing you want your carts to be able to go right out so we just have a space within our parking to accommodate those types of things um over here what we're having uh, or what we're showing is actually a group um, oops, sorry. Um, and so then that way that can um, move with you and just make it a little bit easier to adjust. And then within each one, you can swap out um, the different tenants, make them bigger, make them smaller. And there's a hierarchy to them as well. Um, so it just makes that super simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that tenant. And so for this one, we actually just made it a, a three tenant building instead of a two. And then now we can move that back over. It makes that super simple. And the hierarchy still stays in play. And now just to show you, everything is being built in 3D. So we can apply a, um, a height to all of these different um, pieces as well. Um, so all the buildings are going to kind of update with you on that. Um, this one's actually two story. So you can always add multiple levels to it. And then we just have some space for um, exiting and that sort of thing. Um, we can always put an entrance there as well too. Um, but what's great about TestFit is when you're running through all of this, and so let's just say we came over here for a second and we're actually going to add another out parcel. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my manual um, edits on our parking. And so now we've got this um, quick service uh, unit within here. Maybe we want to do a second one just to the right of it. What we're gonna do is right click on it and duplicate. What I want you to watch is down below, you're seeing the total parking of 321 cells. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and left click and drag that over. 
And now you can see we've just gone in and said, all right, maybe we want this one to actually be closer to the front. For those that are in leasing, you're probably saying, no, that would never happen. Maybe we'll bring both up front. Um, and there we go. So now you can start to see that kind of work with us. But now we're 386 stalls. And within each one of these um, units or spaces, I should say, you can adjust different pieces that uh, go into the demand of each. So right, um, this guy maybe has a little factor of 100 and stalls per thousand square feet is 3.0. Maybe that's okay to have it a four because they're actually going to want a little bit more. And then if we come up here to our retail one, which would be our, our anchor box here, um, we're at a three here. Maybe we want that to be at like a six, right? So six per thousand. Same thing with our multi-tenant building. Uh, we're actually just going to drop that down to maybe like a two and a half, right? Who knows? Maybe it can be less, maybe it can be more because they're going to kind of share that square footage. Um, so same thing with all of these. We're just going to go in and adjust those each down to two and a half. And I think we should be good. So what you're seeing now is we have 286 stalls and our actual building or our parking layout has 298, um, or sorry, has a demand for 298 based on all of that. So we have 286, we need 298. So maybe we need to actually shrink this building a little bit and then we can start to see, all right, we're getting close, getting close. Great. Now we can actually only fit about 2,800 square feet as a second tenant um, versus another 4,400 square foot tenant in order to still meet our parking ratios. Speaking from experience, doing this all um, on our own or by man manual efforts, this is going to take a while, right? The back and forth, up and down, changing the parking. With TestFit, you're able to make those changes really quickly. Um, and see the implication on it, right? So now I can even cycle between different options. So if I wanted parking a different way, if I wanted parking this way for you know, whatever reason, we actually don't meet that minimum anymore. Now, if I switch it again, do it one more time, we do longer runs, now we meet that minimum. So that you know, makes that super simple. Right now, us, Brianna, I think you said software. I'm not sure what that was in reference to. Maybe I, I missed that earlier. So if you want to add some more color to it, I'd be uh, happy happy to answer that. Um, but yeah. So this is um, you know the quick and dirty of like editing and that sort of thing. When it comes when we come into something like a lifestyle center, you know this is all a group, right? We can go in and delete each group that we want. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that for a second. Now, let's say we want this guy to come in here. We can always ungroup all of these as well um, if we want them to, again, remain separate. Um, but this is something that the tech team just pushed out not too long ago. So thank you, to their team. Um, but we're going to go ahead and duplicate this whole space. And now we can actually move that around. And then we just use our, our little trigger and we can put that up here. And you're seeing as we're doing that, Test it's dynamically resolving. So it's going to give you some funny solves in the beginning as you're kind of maneuvering it into place. But once you get it there, then you can start changing exactly how that looks um, and, and what that needs to be. So makes that really easy that way. And then we can always change parking too. So maybe we want this on an angle um, for whatever reason, and we can want to put that up here. Um, so you can start to see how test it's going to dynamically resolve and put those units where they need to go and adjust your parking as well. Any questions on that so far? Anything that you guys wanted to see? Anything that you were hoping that we would solve for? Um, happy to kind of dive into it real quick. Otherwise, next week we're going to get into what it looks like to build one of these from scratch um, on a real site and build out these groups, build out our presets um, and that sort of thing in order to get to a layout that works for us. Something to also mention is we talk about this a lot within our multifamily and industrial, but we export a lot from TestFit. So down below, you're seeing all of our data that's coming through in real time and being updated. All of that exports to a CSV file so you can plug it into Excel, Power BI, whatever you're kind of working on. Um, we can also export the actual plans in a couple of different ways. So you can export it to AutoCAD through a DXF. We can export to SketchUp as well. Um, and then we can also do um, 
a, a direct link into Revit as well as our Revit plugin. Daniel, I had a question. Does the retail functionality work well with other building uses like in a master plan? Absolutely. Um, there's actually a file I'd love to share with you real quick just to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, so I'm just going to stop my screen for a second and I'll show you what that looks like. So TestFit's very good at, at, at master planning because you kind of saw in that um, image just a second ago, um, being able to add roadways within TestFit. Um, so if I go ahead and open up my urban plan um, within here, I'm just going to show you really quickly what retail looks like stacked with other types of uses, um, which is uh, a very interesting way of looking at it too. So let me go ahead and pull that up real quick for you. Sweet. So this is actually funny enough. Thank you, Daniel, for bringing this up. This is uh, a site I was looking at just for fun, um, which is a, a mall in Florida. Um, and just was looking at what would I do if I wanted to repurpose this site. Um, and so this is actually preserving one of the retail boxes, uh, preserving some more retail space, and then looking at how to add um, a bunch of other uses within here. And so if we go into 3D, what we've actually done here is used other types of um, regions and regions at height tool, which we'll get into. It's a little bit more of a, a manual thing in order to put um, multifamily on top of that retail box, put in a little park, have a hotel, and do other things, all with a road network. And we'll start off with road networks uh, next week, Daniel, just so you can see how we can draw roads within TestFit to make this all work for you. Great question, though. Happy to talk about it more, too, if you want. Um, how about if we also need an underground partial parking for service only? Absolutely. Um, so if I came over here in 2D for a second, and we're looking at site J for an example, right? So we've got parking here with retail around it that also stacks with our multifamily above. Um, if I go into our garage, we can say which level this starts at. And so I just pushed it down to basement level one. And so if I go into 3D, um and i just turn on my opacity for a second um we'll be able to see i'm just going to add a couple more levels below and a couple more levels above so now you can see we have this building that is um all the way down below grade two so you're seeing that just kind of in section there for you great question all right we got another one too um how many percent of people use this software and is it useful for urban designers? So uh, that's a great question. I don't know if I have a percentage of all people that use TestFit. Um, we have some great stats on our page of how many um, plans went through TestFit last year. And I won't try and quote them from memory right now, but we have thousands of users that are using us right now from all different parts of the CRE value chain. Um, we've got developers, architects, civil engineers, uh, urban planners, we even have cities, so urban planners within cities. So um, they you know, are definitely seeing value there as well. Uh, but happy to talk about your use case um, if you are looking at this for urban design specifically. Um, I have a background on that too. So uh, happy to kind of talk through it. Something that's fun with the urban planning side of things is, so I, I'm selected on this site right now that's multifamily um, with, uh, with retail within here. So if I open up our expanded tabulation, you're actually going to see the retail within it. But up above, this overview is just taking into account the stats from this site, right? So 293 stalls. If I select out of this for a second, I'm just going to turn off my parcels too. Um, if I select out of it, what you're then seeing is a total of all of the things that are within this master plan, right? So now you've got totals for multifamily units, your hotel, all of your housing, which is going to be some of these like single family townhome runs. Um, all of your retail, any parks that we have in here, office, and then, of course, parking. Um, so that's really easy, too. And you can always export this as well and get all of that into one data table. So you don't have to do it by parcel. Great questions. Anyone that's used TestFit before that maybe hasn't um, dove into the retail side of things here? Um, and maybe there's some questions that you've been pondering that I can help with. No, maybe. It's a great opportunity to ask a bunch of questions. Um, but like I said, <clears throat> next week we're going to get into how it actually works. Um, yes, 
So, Daniel, great question. Test it is compatible with Enscape. Um, I'm not going to do it here just because we're on a live uh, demo piece, but we'll, we have um, uh, a plugin with them so you can actually do um, uh, renderings within there. So it's a direct link um, and it's a live link there um, within a test fit environment of Enscape. So it pops up into a secondary window. Uh, test fit can be very good for neighborhood infill uh, projects. It depends on the type that you're using and um, what's the size. So, you know, when we get to very small projects, there's a lot of editing to kind of work through, um, but happy to hop on a call and kind of work you through that. Infill projects is on my list of things to dive into on a test fit Tuesday as well. Um, it doesn't necessarily do alternative uses to multifamily, but uh, is a very niche style. So um, if you want to chat with me, one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to just shoot me a message and, and we'll schedule that. And then if there's uh, some synergy there, maybe we'll add it to the, the schedule. Um, but yeah, Daniel, happy to show you what TestFit and Enscape does too. There's some uh, good documentation on our website of that connection as well. Um, it's not full materials, it's just you know concept level rendering from them. Awesome. Well, everyone, that's kind of time on my end. I want to be cognizant of everyone's time as well. Um, but thank you all so much for hopping on. Uh, I hope to see you in two weeks when we kind of do a plan ourselves. If you have a site that you want done, um, send me the address, send me the <coughs> um, the program of like what you're actually looking for the site, and maybe we'll use that for our, our demonstration. But um, otherwise, I'll just pick a site that looks like fun. Um, but happy to do something that's in reality that one of you guys is working on. So awesome. Well, everyone that's in the past of the storm, stay safe. Everyone else have a fantastic day. Um, and please do reach out. Love chatting with you all. Thank you so much.